open up your Bibles. Go with me to Psalms 121. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 121. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence, my, whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He will keep you. He will keep, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not, shall neither sleep nor slumber. How many of you know that God is always working, that he never sleeps, he never slumbers, and he's working on your behalf, amen? He is working, he's moving, he's operating, he's doing things, amen? Hallelujah. Verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God praise for his word. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord is working on your behalf. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He is not getting tired at what he does. He's not taking a day off. Every day, every moment, the Lord is working for you. He is working on your behalf. He's working to fulfill his promises for your life. And many times we go through our walk with God. And we might get discouraged because we were, be were believing God to get to certain places and to achieve certain things and to see certain aspects of our life come about. And we're not there fast enough and we get impatient. We wonder, when is God going to deliver me from this issue? When is God going to take me to his promise? When is God going to move on my behalf? I want to tell you, my friends, God is never late. He is working on your behalf. He is doing a good thing outside of maybe your realm. He's moving heaven and earth to bring forth his word and his promises for you. Do not get discouraged. Do not get lazy. Do not get fearful. Just remember that God is moving, that God is working, that God is not asleep. He is not, he's not, he has his eyes always on you. To fulfill his word for your life. Amen. But many times we, we, it just seems, you know, from one day to the next day to the next day, it's like we want, we want fast food blessings. We want fast food healing. We want everything now, 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 now. But you, you got to understand, it's not about the situation you're going through. It's about the work that the Lord's doing in your life through that situation. Because God, you know, God's not going to, he's not going to waste that situation and keep you the same way. The worst thing that could happen is if he takes you through that, 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 that issue and that situation and that problem. But when you get to the other side, you have no thankfulness. You have no, you have no gratitude unto God. You have no change in your character and in your integrity in your life. But you, whatever issues are broken, stay broken on the other side. That's not God's intention. He is your heavenly father. And he will not let you stay as someone with all these issues and all these, these brokennesses in your life. But he's working not just around your situation, but he's also working in you. He's teaching you how to walk and how to, how to act and how to talk like him. The Bible says we're being transformed into the image of Christ. Have you ever thought maybe that situation that has come into my life is drawing me closer to him? The issue might be so big that it looks like there's no other way except for a miracle from God. Praise the Lord. God is with us. 
If we need a miracle to deliver us, praise the Lord, we serve a, a God that knows how to do miracles. Don't get discouraged. I remember a story about this one man of God during the slavery times. And he was uh, always talking about the Lord's deliverance. And he was preaching in a church service how, how God was going to deliver the, the, the African people out of slavery. But one service, he just got discouraged from day to day. And he got discouraged and he went up there and he was just talking very negative. Just, uh, we're so tired, it's so difficult. Almost a quitting attitude. But in that service, there was a prophetess. And as she heard this man of God talk, you gotta understand, you might be a man or a woman of God, but you still have a flesh that gets weary sometimes. Are you perfect? None of us are, but the Lord is transforming us, amen? He is perfecting us, amen? And this man was discouraged, and this prophetess had heard the words that he was speaking, and she stood up in the middle of the service, she, and she, she stood up, and she screamed out, Is God dead? And then she sat down. You got to understand your God is not dead. That he's still alive, amen? Jesus is still alive. And he is moving and he has a way of doing things that are beyond our imagination. There are blessings and there are promises that God spoke to you many years ago. And some of you might be thinking, are these ever going to happen in my life? Oh, I see it right now. There are some people that God has a call upon your life. And some of you should be ministering. Some of you should be worshiping. Some of you should be preaching. Some of you are supposed to be at the pulpits and be at the pastorships. I know, I know the Lord is speaking right now. But you got discouraged along the way. But God's word will not come back to him void. He declared it over your life. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. And you might be going through a dry spell. You might be going through a, a time where it seems like everything is against you, like there's no way to get back there. you got to remember, God does not forget about you. You are called by God. You are bought with a price. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to heaven. You belong to God. See, you got to understand about, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be preaching today. Praise the Lord. you got to understand, there's a thing called... Uh, it's called um, redemption. When Adam went to the, to the tree with Eve and they, poured, they took of that, that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they sold themselves. They sold themselves with a lie, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. They sold themselves to the devil. So the devil owned their future. Death owned their future. Darkness owned their future. They were in chains to, to, to fear, in chains to, to sin, in chains to, to poverty, in chains to death. And man cried out, will someone deliver us? Will someone break these bars and set us free? Will someone buy us back so that we could belong to them? And Jesus, when he laid down his life, he was paying a price. The Bible talks about how what he paid was more than enough to pay for all the sins of mankind. He purchased you with his blood. It cost him for you to come into the kingdom of God. And because of his payment at the cross of Calvary, you are not your own anymore. You don't belong to the devil, but you do not belong to yourself. You belong to Jesus Christ. You belong to God the Father. You are a son of the most high God. You've been redeemed. Those chains came off. Those bars were removed. The son has set you free. Not for you to turn around and go right back into that bar, into that, that jail of, of, of sin and fear and selfishness. No, you belong to God. And every day you refuse to do the will of God, you are stealing from your, your heavenly father. He bought you. And he's given you a ministry. 
And that ministry, the Bible calls it the ministry of reconciliation, of telling those who do not know that Jesus is alive, that he is, and that they could come to him and that God is not angry at him, but God loves him. Hallelujah. How many are thankful that Jesus bought your life? How many thankful that you are a child of God, that you are saved, that all your sins have been forgiven, that you've been set free, that the chains and the, and the bars are gone, but you are now a child of the Most High God. Come on, let me see your hand. How many of you are, 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 are thankful for what the Lord has done? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the Bible talks about it's the goodness of God that leads man to salvation. One of the reasons why we cry when we give our heart to the Lord and we cry many times when the presence of God comes upon our life, it's because we're tasting his goodness. And we think, why aren't we just with you, God? Why aren't we just with you in heaven? Why aren't we just there? Why do we have to be here? When God comes and touches your, it goes beyond words. It goes beyond all mental understanding. But he does a work deep inside a heart, and all we have is this thankfulness. Lord, thank you. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for, for touching me. Thank you for, for calling me and choosing me to be a son of your son. Thank you, Father. And it goes beyond our, our imagination. It goes beyond words. It goes beyond all description. It is just this love, pure love. And because of that love, we surrender. And we wonder, why, why don't we just get there? Because, you know, down here is just so much struggle. It's because there's someone that's just like you that has not met him. There's someone that's just like you that he loves just as much as he loves you. And he can't touch them. He, he, he can't reach them. So he needs... Your voice, he needs your hands, and he wants to put a love so deep inside your heart that you lay down your will. You lay down your bodily lusts. You lay down whatever things in this world that entice you because you want to bring someone home to your father. That's what it's all about. Amen. And as we do that, when it is our time to go home, your father is going to be there to greet you, and he's going to wrap his arms around you, and he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my friends. Listen, the Lord has been speaking to me about the month of November to go on a mission trip to Africa. As you know, you see in the news, there are a lot of things happening in this world. There's a lot of violence and there's a lot of intimidation, but the gospel needs to be preached no matter what. We cannot buy back tomorrow. All we have is today. And so we're going out there in faith, believing that God's going to use us to preach the gospel to those that are lost and encourage the brethren to walk in the things of the Lord. We're going to Kenya. We're going to South Africa. And I need your help. I'm asking you right now, would you help support this mission trip? We have to raise $15,000 for the 40 days while we're over there uh, preaching the gospel. So I want to encourage you to give. Go online to faithpleasesgod.com and give online or stop by Faith Pleases God Church right here in Harlingen and give an offering. It's going to be used to preach the gospel to the nations. Thank you for your support and thank you for your prayers. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I speak to those people that the Lord is speaking to right now. Those that have been called and have an anointing upon their life, but you walked away from it, the Lord's calling you back. It doesn't mean that you force yourself. It doesn't mean that you just automatically jump to wherever you left off. You let God take you there. But you humble yourself. You go to God and say, God, I am sorry 
I'm sorry I missed the mark, but today I repent. I turn from the way I was going and I put my eyes back on you and I'm gonna serve you the rest of my life, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, just close your eyes, lift up your hands to heaven. The Lord's touching so many people right now. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. We praise your name, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, the Lord doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He knows how to call you back right where you belong. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There are big things that God is working. He's doing some incredible, incredible things. I'm telling you, we just finished, you know, the celebration eight years of being in ministry, but it seems like the Lord is pressing a reset button on my entire life, that the Lord is, is wiping out everything that is holding me back, that the Lord is setting me completely free. It's almost like if, if God is, 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 if all this time we had been work, walking and working in, in the desert land, but we saw the faithfulness of God, but I believe right now we are right at the edge of the water getting ready to step on over into the promised land in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I want to tell you, I, I've been to the other side of the promised land, and um, my goodness, it is, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Just like the Lord has said, I'm telling you, the grapes are so big. They're so big. The blessings of the Lord are so big. The greatness of the things of God are so amazing. Amen. And we're getting ready to step right into it. Amen. You got to understand, God is doing a work. And when he does a work in the church, it's not about a building, it's about a people. And the Lord is doing a work inside my life, and I know the Lord is doing a work inside your life. Amen. Some of you got, you just showed up at the, at the edge of the water. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but some of you had to walk with us through deserts as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we're all going in together. Amen. We're all going in together, and the Lord is doing this amazing job, this amazing work around us that it blows my mind. I wish I could tell you all the things that God is doing right now. I wish I could tell you just a little, a little picture of what God is doing, but I can't. It's a secret. And my wife told me I'm really good at keeping secrets. Not really. But let me just say this. It's a good land. It's a blessed land. It's a land that will transform everything about you. It's going to transform our, 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 our city. It's going to transform the nations. Amen. And I believe that God wants to, set, wants to bring you into that land as well. And I want you to get ready and expect to enter in. Tell your neighbor we're entering in. No matter how big it looks, no matter how great it looks, remember you belong there. You belong there. Don't think that you don't belong. You belong. Especially when God, you know, you got to understand the Bible says that God does far greater than you can ask, think, or imagine. Amen. He's such a good God that even when you've been praying and asking God for certain things, God ends up blessing you with something beyond your imagination. And you have to believe that when, when you get to where God is taking you and when the Lord brings what he has planned for you, you have to receive it in the name of Jesus. Don't, don't be in fear. Don't be worried. Don't wonder, oh, how am I going to, how am I going to, to be able to possess this? How am I going to be able to enjoy this? How am I going to be able to, to walk in, in these show, in these shoes or to, or to go to these places or to live in these places or to, to have these types of blessings? Just remember that the same God that brought it to you is the same God that will give you the wisdom and the understanding and the strength to exceed wherever the Lord is taking you. And you got to, don't see yourself as, oh, you're just that little boy that grew up in San Benito, Texas. Don't see yourself as someone that, that is, is, is not worthy. You are worthy. And it's not the work of the hand, but it's the arm of God that is doing it. 
This is not because of the lust of the flesh, but it's because of the blessing of the Lord. Amen. So when God takes you to that place, the Bible says he makes you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The Bible says that, that, that he is the one that will promote you. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. It comes from the Lord. And you got to be ready to step into that. Even when you feel like you're not qualified, you go to God and ask God to qualify you. You go to God and ask him for wisdom, ask him for knowledge, ask him for strength. You grab hold of the presence of God every day. You grab hold of the presence of God and the presence of God, the spirit of God will lead you and direct you and tell you exactly what to do, where to go, how to do it. And guess what? It's going to be the best way. I remember this, this one time my, my brother was telling me a, a story about my father. There was this, this one uh, Christian broadcaster who had got permission to, uh, to launch a satellite in space and put TV channels on there so that people with, with little satellite dishes could pick it up all over the United States and watch Christian programming. And he had gotten that permission, but he didn't raise up the money that was needed to do it. I think it was like a $10 million project at the time. And the time had already failed. And his permission from the FCC, the Federal Communication uh, Commission, had already expired. So he went to this, this convention of a bunch of, of Christian broadcasters. And he was talking to people. And every one of them said, you got to talk to Carlos Ortiz. So this man ended up meeting my father, not knowing him, but he went to him with this piece of paper and he said, he told him the dilemma. My father said, give me that paper. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call. My father comes home to Texas. He sits down on the kitchen table and my oldest brother, Carlos Jr. was with him. And he looked at my brother and he said, Carlos, I'm going to show you how God will extend the life of this piece of paper and they will launch that satellite dish. So my father pulled out the FCC handbook, all the laws and regulation from the Federal Communication Commission. You gotta understand something. My father was a high school dropout. But the Lord gave him wisdom and knowledge, taught him how to be a lawyer and an engineer. He didn't go to no school. He went to the school of the Holy Ghost. And he was called for a purpose and for a plan. And God would equip him. So here he pulled out the laws. I mean, it was a big old book like that. And he sat down across from my brother. And he opened up the page. And he just began to turn the pages. And my brother's looking at him. My, my father just kept on turning the pages and turning the pages. Until he got to the very end of the book. He shut the book grabbed that paper, put it right on top of that book. And he said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for mercy. Open up this satellite again to live, that it will be launched and it will preach the gospel all over the United States. My brother's eyes got really big. My father said, in Jesus' name, amen. Some people think, well, you know, does that really work? Yes. <laughs> A short time later, the FCC replied to the request and granted them another 10 years to launch the satellite. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> that, satellite, that satellite was Echo Star, which is now Dish Network. But they still have like 100 channels set aside that they have a package called Sky Angel full of Christian programs. You think you're little people. No. You got to understand governments move when you pray. You got to understand that even Jesus looked at the storm and the waves and he commanded them to, he said, peace, be still. And the winds had to respond to the word that came from Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, everything has to respond when you walk in faith. You're not little. You're like giants in the land. Amen. Amen. You're amazing. God is with you. Amen. The Lord is not sleeping. He's not slumbering. He's working on your behalf. Amen. 
And some of you might even be dealing with situations going on right now. Maybe it's in your business. Maybe it's in your personal life. Understand this. The same God that saved your life is the same God that can answer your prayers. Walk in faith. Trust the Lord. Let, let God lead you along that path and you will have good success. Amen. I was uh, speaking to a, a brother here in the church, a businessman just this week. And, uh, you know, God, God's been speaking to him. Uh, he was sharing with me that, that uh, he hadn't been able to sleep uh, like normal hours because the Lord has been taking him. You got to understand when you develop a relationship with God, God is a jealous God and he knows how to get, get, get you away from things and just be alone with you. Amen. Uh, how many of you have, have had the Holy Spirit just wake you up like around three o'clock in the morning? Let me see your hands. It's normal. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> just letting you know it's normal. Just look around. It's normal. Okay. It's because the Lord likes to talk. He likes to speak. There's, there's something about that quiet time. Some people, they even stay up late at night because the Lord just gets them aside. Praise the Lord. And if you want that, that relationship with the Lord, just speak to them. Guess what? To, even tonight, the Lord is going to say, uh-huh, it's not time to sleep. Come, come. We're going to have time together. Amen. And when you walk into that closet or into that room, wherever that you set aside to get along with God, guess what? He's going to be there waiting for you. He's going to be there waiting for you and he's going to have gifts to bless you with. Amen. So the Lord had been pulling him aside and, and the Lord had just been spending time with him and the Lord had just been filling his cup. And you know, even though a lot of the things going on in his business have been very difficult, the peace of God has been upon his life. Where normally it would crush every single person that was in his industry, but because God is with him, He's receiving strength that comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he had been dealing with this one issue for such a long time. And he just, you know, during that time of being with the Lord, he was just worshiping God, thanking God, just spending time with the Lord, not even thinking about that issue. But you got to understand God is working on your behalf. Tell your neighbor, God is working on your behalf. See, God is not sleeping. He's not slumbering. He's, he's, he's preparing things for you. He's preparing things for you. And some of you think, well, why doesn't he just tell me? He will tell you at the right time. God bless you guys. I thank you guys for watching this program, but I want to invite you to Jesus Loves Harlingen Back to School Party. It's going to be at the Rio Grande Valley White Wings uh, Harlingen Stadium. And we are partnering with the White Wings. The entire baseball game is free, but you need to come on out and get a ticket from us. We want to bless all the children. We got a thousand backpacks we're going to be giving away. We got school supplies we're going to be giving away. We're going to even bless people with t-shirts. So it starts August the 10th. Tell all your friends, tell everyone, bring them out. We're going to have a great time at the baseball game. Free baseball game at Jesus Loves Harlingen Back to School Party, August the 10th. God bless you and bring your friends. We'll see you there. Bye.